Hello, my name is Matthew Hallberg. I'm the product manager over at Serial Tech. Uh, we'll be doing a four-part series on using the SAS SATA Bus Expert. We'll be doing some training. The first section is going to be on setting up a capture. Uh, we're going to go over how to set up the Bus Expert for capture. We'll be covering uh, what kind of trigger modes there are, buffer segments, pre-capture filters, and capture status. So as a note, there are the recording options of the Bus Expert. There are three different recording modes. Manual, which is fill up and circulate the buffer until a user intervention. Snapshot, fill up the buffer and stop when full. Trigger, fill up and circulate the buffer until a user-defined event occurs. And then there's this other option for trigger positioning, and that's used to determine how much traffic before and after uh, the recording relative to the trigger event. So for an example, if you have like a, a bus hang, you should move the trigger position all the way over to the right, so it'll capture everything before the hang event. Let's take a quick look at the software. So I'm going to go ahead and connect here. Alright, so again, to kind of re-go over what we just talked about, we're in the device tab. There's a stop mode here manual stop, stop on full trigger, your trigger position, how much before, how much after. Usually I leave it around 50 percent but again it depends on what type of thing you're triggering on and how much traffic you want to see before your trigger event and after your trigger event. There's also another thing called buffer segments. Buffer segments allow the user to divide the buffer into much smaller buffers which each buffer waiting for the trigger condition. So this allows users to trigger on the same event X amount of times and that X being the number of segments you set up and see if different activity occurs before and after the event. So in here you'll see number of segments and I can increase it. So we can have up to 16 or actually you can have up to 256 segments and notice that this number over here changes depending on the number of segments we have. Um, so again, uh, you could pretty much just set a trigger, press start capture, the analyzer will start capturing if the trigger event is, matched, is, is met, it'll fill up the rest of the buffer for that particular segment, and then restart and wait for the next capture event. So if you use buffer segments, I generally recommend that you have this thing slided you know, all the way over at either 98% or 100%. Because generally, you don't want to wait for the segment to finish recording before you start a new segment, especially if your trigger event occurs in that final however many percent you have over here. There's also another thing called pre-capture filters. Uh, you'll hear me talk about filters in a different way later on, but, but essentially pre-capture filters allow the user to maximize how much buffer they're using by minimizing capturing of less useful information. For example, in, in serial ATA, a lines occur every 256 D words. So you can imagine in a trace, every 256 D words, you'll find a couple of lines coming from one direction. These will definitely fill up a buffer really fast. Another example is in serial ATA, um, you have what's called cont data. So you'll have two primitives, some primitives will have two in a row or three in a row and then a cont, which means it's going to be continuing to send these primitives, and then it'll send cont data, which is just scrambled D words, essentially. And it, they represent that primitive string, but they're doing it such that the line doesn't stay uh, repeating the same pattern over and over and over again. Filters can be set per direction, and that makes it really useful when you're looking at a problem on one side and not the other. So, for instance, if I only care about uh, x readies happening on the device side. Um, I can choose not to record x readies on the host side. We also have data clipping, which will chop the data payload off, uh, which will save even more space. So if you don't care about data payloads, and you want to see thousands of commands, or just a much larger amount of traffic, you can chop off the payload. Lastly, we have a feature called strong primitive compression. And it's useful when there are several repeating primitives separated by idle and align data and users want to know what occurred without filtering them. 
The example I have is uh, in, Cyril, in sorry, Cyril attached SCSI or SAS, there's a particular primitive called AIP which can occur several thousand times. Um, normal compression would show AIP8, AIP8, AIP8. And the reason why there are three events that say AIP8, AIP8, AIP8 is because in, be in between each string of 8 there was an align or an idle event that stopped the compression. So when you use strong primitive compression it ignores the aligns and idles and so it'll show an AIP24. So let's take a quick look at the software and see what that looks like. Here's the filtering options and you'll see here uh, that it's grayed out over here because this is the bus mod. But you have your events 3 and 4, ports 3 and ports 4. I can specify my options by direction so I can say only capture the um, D words during OB burst coming from the target or only capture my SATA R errors coming from the host, etc. If you if there are other primitives that you want to filter out or choose to only filter out on a certain port, I can go to edit options and choose the primitives from this list. Note that when you choose a primitive from this list, it'll appear here, which means it'll no longer be captured unless you have a check mark. So now I'm going to capture it on I3 and I4. And it won't be captured on any of the other ports. Okay. Your data clipping frames is here and your strong primitive compression is here. So lastly there's the capture status screen. The capture status screen duplicates the LEDs found on the bus export hardware itself. Uh, any counters, trigger states, and performance metrics are also updated. Uh, the performance that we show is uh, read and write megabytes per second and it's per port which allows you to compare between ports. We find that that's very useful for competitive comparisons or let's say you're comparing firmware A versus firmware B and also lane efficiency if you're using multiple lanes like in a four wide environment. So let's go ahead and look at the software for that. So you'll see here, uh, there's OOB links, OOB link, frame, tembeer, command, error status, and speed. Down here you'll have the megabytes per second per link. And if we had any counters set, you would see a section for counters and counters per second. This concludes the section on setting up a trace. Uh, setting up the analyzer to record. The next section will be on building your triggers.